All right, so good morning, good Monday morning to you. Uh, there are three weeks left of class, six days, and then the final. Time to panic, right? <laughs> um, maybe not so much for this class, but definitely panic for your other classes. Um, we are obviously rapidly approaching um, the final. Um, this assignment that you got today, 106, is the last one. I recognize I'm missing 107. That's OK. I used to do two separate. SketchUp and then collaging as separate, and I just combine them together. Um, so there isn't an assignment 107, so this is it. Uh, don't forget that that portfolio is coming. That portfolio is going to be due on the day of the final, so now would be a good time to start kind of backfilling it, get the rest of your assignments in it, start getting it ready. Um, we will spend at least another full day working through it in class as it gets kind of closer to the end. I'll bring the portfolios back. We'll talk a little bit about binding it and that sort of thing. Um, as it gets a little bit closer. If you get a full version of your portfolio and you want me to go through it and redline it and take a look at it and make comments, I'd be happy to. Uh, it's just a matter of you getting to the point. The only thing that I ask is that you actually do a print of it instead of just looking at it on the screen because you'll learn a lot from the print in terms of what it looks like because the final product is a print version, uh, which you'll have to make. Are there any questions about that? No? What's the size for the portfolio? Any size uh, up into you know eight and a half by eleven page, but you could do eight by eight if you want, eight and a half by eight and a half, eight and a half by eleven. Eleven by seventeen, I'm not a big fan of because it's really hard to manage. And if you go in for like a job interview or something like that, it's just kind of awkward, um, and people generally don't want it. Um, if you really want to do an eleven by seventeen, we can talk about it. I've had some people do eleven by seventeens in the past, and they never turned out that great. Um, it's, it's a little too much greener still. Better to make it a little bit smaller. Any other questions about it? No? OK. So today we're going to continue in the world of SketchUp. Um, but I thought it would be good to show you kind of the transition between AutoCAD and SketchUp. You guys already spent a lot of time working on your drawings in AutoCAD. Why not learn to bring those straight into SketchUp so that you can you know, learn to, to kind of couple the two programs together, which I don't think is a bad idea. That being said, it's not essential that you use the exact same building. If you didn't like your building or something didn't really work out or you make some modifications to it, not a problem. Right? It is the same program, so transitioning from what you had before into what it is now is, is kind of a logical um, sort of thing. So we have SketchUp 2013 on these computers instead of 2015, which means that we can't bring an AutoCAD 2013, 14, or 15 file straight into SketchUp. Right? If you update SketchUp, if you have it at home and it's SketchUp 2015, you can go straight with a current version uh, of AutoCAD, is what it is. So that's why I have AutoCAD open. Um, all of your paper space layouts mean nothing for this export. Uh, all I'm going to do is go up to the Save As, which is the little disk with the, the, the little pencil next to it. And I will choose, instead of AutoCAD 2013, I will go back to AutoCAD 2010 which is the next version back. You can always go all the way back to 2004. 2004 AutoCAD is generally compatible with anything you can throw at it. Um, so it, you, if you want to be safe, you can go back that far. Uh, I'm pretty sure that 2010 will work, uh, though I have to double check that it will work. So you see here that I saved 2004, 7, 10, and 13 because I wanted to see which one would work. I know 2013 works on SketchUp 2015 because that's what I have on my laptop and work fine. Um, so anyway, once I've saved that, I'm going to go to SketchUp and open a brand new SketchUp file. We can get rid of the little uh, architect dude. He doesn't need to be there. And, and I'm going to go to the File menu and then Import. And I want to bring in an AutoCAD file. And I'm going to have to specify under Files of Type uh, AutoCAD. Uh, and then here I am in my list. It's the same list. Uh, this is again on my flash drive. And I'm going to pick the 2010 version. And I'll go ahead and click Open. Uh, and it should give me a little summary of what's been imported. And when I click on Close, we'll see that it gives me right, my drawing. right? But it also gives me all of those construction rays as guides um, because they existed in my original drawing. Um, I can turn them off by going up to the View and then Guides. And they'll go away to kind of clarify it a little bit. Uh, you could delete them if you wanted to, but you don't have to. Okay. The other thing that happens is when this comes in, oh, look, things are different in different versions, right? Uh, in this version, uh, these are, in fact, live lines. When I brought it in on my laptop in 2015, it was a, a group 
and I had to explode it to get access to it, but it appears to be working fine. Uh, these are just all lines right now. Uh, so if I want to start working with them as surfaces, I need to actually create some surfaces to work with. Uh, and so I'm going to use just the rectangle tool, and I'm going to draw from one corner of, my, uh, corner of my building to the other. Now, I could include everything, but I think it's a little bit easier to do it in two sections. Right? And as I draw, you see that some of the squares are filled in. And this is one of the challenges with AutoCAD is it doesn't always fill, all, uh, fill everything in. Uh, so you may have to, to add a few extra uh, little rectangles as you go. Try throwing a rectangle there, um, which will fill in the rest of the pieces, right? something like that. The floor tiles don't really matter for right now. Uh, what I want is I want to make sure that all of my walls have been filled in. It looks like I'm missing a little bit there, and I'm missing a little bit there. All right, And I can fill in the roof and stuff a, a little bit later on. I'm missing a little bit of these windows. Not the end of the world. So we'll just draw a few extra rectangles. That little bit of door. Is unhappy. It's not gonna let me do it. And this is this is the quirk of SketchUp. Sometimes it just doesn't work. Uh, when all else fails, a lot of times the diagonal line will allow you to fill it in, then you can go back and delete the diagonal. It, uh, whatever, it's a SketchUp thing. All right, so once I have these filled in, uh, I can go ahead and extrude the faces up, uh, which is using the push-pull tool, which is what I'll start with. Now, right now, you see how this is kind of that bluish color? It doesn't really matter, but why is this not? Isn't it wonderful when you can't? OK, yeah, I remember this on these computers from last semester. OK. Sometimes this stuff happens, right? Doesn't happen on my own laptop. You can't see that you have the surface selected for whatever reason after you bring in an AutoCAD. So save this file and then just open it again. Okay? I don't know. It's SketchUp, right? It's free. It, it is what it is. So let me go ahead and save this on my flash drive and then we'll open it again. I remember pulling my hair out last semester trying to figure out what, what was causing that. Uh, let me go here to 1.6. <laughs> it probably has been fixed in some kind of an update that just hasn't been installed on these computers. All right, so now once you save it and reopen it, then you can see it. Uh, so one of the things about this is you see how it's kind of blue. It doesn't really matter, but technically the face is reversed. So we have two different sides of the faces. So if you, if you take one of these blue uh, surfaces, you right click on it, and you say reverse faces, you'll get the white side. Just looks a little cleaner. Um, so I might go around and select these wall pieces, and then right click and say reverse faces. And they'll, they'll turn white. So once I have this established, I'm going to use the push-pull tool, which is right here, to pull up the walls. Right? And so we'll say that the walls are uh, 8 feet tall. And I can do it with each one of these, like so, as I go around my building. Now on something like this, see how there's that line that separates these two? right? I can go in and I could pull them up as separate objects, or I could delete this line, which makes this one surface, which I can then pull up as one uh, object. So it's a lot about cleanliness when you're going through this uh, in terms of how you pull these lines up. So we can continue our way around the building here. Uh, let me just do the rest of these faces. It's like flip in Rhino. And let me say reverse faces. And then we can use the push pull. And I can do the rest of these. So eight feet. Uh, 
yeah, you can't do them all at once. So here's another one where I can get rid of that little line. We'll take this surface, we'll use push-pull, and we'll go up by 8 feet. Almost there. Oh, I didn't reverse that face. All right, so I have the bulk of this outlined now uh, in terms of where my walls are. We can see that they're already starting to, to extrude up. Now, it would be nice, however, to, to know where the windows would go. Uh, and I can just uh, push-pull these pieces up and get that bottom sill of the window, or I can use this drawing as a bit of a guide for myself. Uh, and that's what I want to show you how to do, whether you choose to do it or not. So I want to rotate this, and I know that the, the floor of my building should be right here. Uh, and when I use the rotate tool in SketchUp, I really need some kind of a surface to rotate from as a guide. Uh, and so if I were just picking rotate, which of course I can't find, there it is, right? If I came over here, it would just want me to rotate this, you know, in this direction. That's not what I want. So instead, I'm going to use a little rectangle here, and I'll just draw a little box as a guide, and then I'll push pull this box up so that I have a little bit of a 3D. It doesn't matter the actual size of it. And then once I have that, I can select these objects, go to my rotate tool here, and when I'm on that face, you see how the little protractor switches which axes it's in? So I want to rotate from there to there, which gives me a rotation. Now, we, since we folded out all of these um, lines, they're going to line up if I were to say, for example, draw a line from this corner of the window to where it met here. Zoom in so you can see a little bit better. Right? And it should snap right there. See how it turns green? That's a straight line to this part of the window. Right? And I can then draw a cross right there. And I'm starting to make that first little bit of the line. We can come back to the sill, and I can draw a cross like that. And I can draw a cross. Now, SketchUp, by its nature, will always fill in any, any enclosed voids, which can be annoying, but it can also be really good. So there it is there. So let's get rid of this, because I don't need that. And we can also get rid of this. right? And we see that now I have the, the bottom face of where that window is going to be. Okay. So I can use the push-pull tool. And I can pull this back. Come on. To there. And now I have that bottom piece of the wall. right? And I can, I can use that as a guide from now on if I were to, exa for example, oops, come on. I come to this piece. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. Reverse faces, and then let me zoom out slightly. Push pull. We can come up to where we match that. Oh, looks like I'm missing a little line here. There. OK, so I did the, the bottoms of those windows. I can do the tops of the windows in the same or a different way. I could, for example, uh, start with a rectangle at the top here, something like that. And you see it rather nicely fills in there. Um, let me see here. Let's draw across. And we can get rid of that piece of it. And then I can come on the inside. And a lot of this is learning how to manipulate so you can see what you're trying to do. And we can draw this to there, there, and to there, and then delete this part of the window. Oh, looks like I have that part of the window too. And then we can orbit. So you can see that I was able to create those little windows. Now there's a lot of extra lines that have shown up right around uh, when I did the extrusion and that sort of thing. I can go in and I can just delete these lines and get a nice smooth surface around my windows. Oops. Obviously not the surface.
So uh, well, I'll clean up those last little pieces there. And there. Like that. And we can even delete those guides. So I used this front elevation as a guide for what was happening uh, on my building itself. Right? I could also, if I wanted to, right, I could delete, let me get rid of a few of these surfaces like that. I could take, you know, let's say I wanted this bottom little bit of the window. Uh, let me get rid of these for just a second. You selected. All right, we'll go with it. OK, so I have those bottoms selected. Uh, I can use my move tool to move so that it goes back to the windows right here. Right, I've got a few extra lines that came with it, which we can delete. And now I have those little window boxes underneath the sills. I can use the push-pull. And I didn't quite snap to it. Come on now. There. Push-pull. Pull this out a little bit. There that. And so you can see that I was able to build up Kind of a little sill for the bottom of the window. Anyway, totally up to you in terms of how much detail you want to add or what you want it to look like. Okay. So the other thing that's useful sometimes in SketchUp is to recognize that there's a bunch of pre-made objects um, that are in SketchUp that you can drop in. And I don't have a problem with you using those. Uh, when you get further along in your studio classes, sometimes people will want you to use them. Sometimes they won't. Um, one of the big challenges with say windows is if you go and pick a, a standard window it's always going to look like a standard window and a lot of times in the world of learning to be a designer instructors will want you to design your own window put your own window in don't be constrained by a predetermined size or something like that so if you were doing your own window uh, it's it's really <coughs> excuse me as simple as drawing it in you know where you are going to put in a little pane of glass. Oh, it looks like I'm missing part of this. Oh, come on. Snap for me. Something like that, where you drop your pane of glass in. Uh, and then we can assign materials. Obviously, this isn't transparent yet. I can go to Window, and then Materials. And somewhere in here, there's glass. Thank you. And I can drop that on so we can see it as glass. Okay. So anyway, so that's there. That's under Window Materials. However, if I wanted to drop in what's called a component, I can go to Window, and then Components. And that will bring up this little component thing. There's a search box for. Um, if you wanted to look online for components. So for example, let's say I wanted a Pella window. We can let it search. Right? And so there's a bunch of um, you know, Pella windows. Let me say Pella window. Right? So here's actually by Pella. Um, and they have a bunch of pre-made windows that you can drop in. Right? So let's say I wanted to drop this one in. Go ahead and load it directly into my SketchUp model. And there, really fast, I have its own window. right? Pretty easy. So let's come in here, and let's say I wanted it to go right, come on, right there. Okay? It's obviously way bigger than the window that I wanted. So we're going to have to deal with some, some scaling issues, which is what I wanted to talk to you guys about as well. So let me go ahead and move this so that it's not sticking out of my wall, but that it's, it's back here. 
Oh, it looks like I need another little line. Really? Come on. This is why SketchUp drives me nuts sometimes. Now, why won't you snap right there? So nice of you. Uh, anyway, totally not doing what I want it to do. Uh, let's go through the scale first, and then we'll, we'll deal with that in just a second. So the scale, right? I have the object selected. I'm going to pick the scale tool, and it's going to give me these little handles that go all the way around my object. See the green boxes? The ones basically in the middle, right? you see how it, it highlights in red which ones are opposite in terms of scaling. It's going to let me control one or two or three different scale directions. right? So one of these corners, for example, would, would control three different scales. If I was in the center, it would be just two scales. If I was in the center of the object this way, it's just one direction. I always find one direction to be the easiest to scale. So I'm going to stick with the center here, and I'm going to change the height. And you see how I'm clicking and dragging. It's going to let me change the height until the height matches up with there. Okay. Then I'm going to change the width right, by, again, selecting this center. And we'll drag it until it matches up with the width. Oops. The width right there. Really? <laughs> yep. There, right? And then the other one I would have would be the depth, if I wanted to do the depth, which is right here in the center, uh, where I can control what the depth would be. And so you can kind of see how that adjusts. Okay? Um, so for whatever reason, my window is being extraordinarily cranky and not wanting to snap backwards in space to right there. So I'm going to approximate for just a second. Why are you? Yeah, let me uh, orbit. I'm so used to right click to orbit. So let's try to do it from the back side and see. Oh, come on. So annoying. You know, I did this this morning just to make sure it would work. Yeah, this is snapping to nowhere. So nice. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lindo. Gotta love it when it happens to me while I'm trying to, to show you, right? Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Hey, at least it happens to me, right? And this, this just proves that I'm still human. There. Hey, right? So you just fight with it long enough, and it'll, it'll work. So let's look at the front side here. Okay, It's not quite long enough for me, so I really need to adjust that scale. Um, so I'll go back to scale. We'll pick this point, and we're going to drag it out that way with the hopes that I can make it even with the thickness of my wall, which it is now is. And so now I have a reasonably nice looking window that's been inserted into uh, my particular scene. Okay? It would be nice if I added a little bit of trim around the window, right? so I could continue making this look a little bit better, for, but for now it's fine. Okay, so that's a component. There are obviously many more components that are available. Um, if you go to the window components and then you search this 3D warehouse, um, there's furniture and, and all that kind of stuff if you wanted to put that in uh, as well. Okay, so the bulk of what you're doing today is really modeling up this building. Right? I want you to get as far as you possibly can with this model. Uh, done would be the best place to be. Uh, because when you come back on Wednesday and then for the subsequent class periods, we're going to be working with this model to create outputs and to collage. And so if you follow along and stay up with what we're doing, everything that you need for assignment 7 will be done in class. Or 107. 106, sorry. Everything you need for assignment 106 will be done in class over the next three or four days. Um, so if you model well today, it'll pay out uh, long term. Okay. Are there any other questions? Yeah. How do I make the roof? 
Uh, if I were doing a sloping roof, um, what I really need is I need the, the kind of the upper floor of where I'm going. Um, this, this drawing, I only had the, um, the flat roof. Uh, it would be very, very helpful if I had the actual um, pitched roof drawn. Uh, let's see if I can draw it really fast for us. Uh, you know, it's been a while since I did this. <laughs> um, let me spin this around here. That's not going to help me. I'm going to have to do it kind of the old-fashioned way. Okay, so I just drew that 6 and 12 pitch, uh, and I'm going to have to draw it over here in just a second. But I would do the same thing that I did before, where I'd use a little practice object here um, in 3D to set up my rotation. And I'd rotate this. Like that. Once I had that established, right, I know where the peak of the roof is, so I can draw a line that goes out this way for the peak of the roof. Right? Likewise, I can come back and draw from here another line that would represent the peak of the roof. So there's one slope of the roof. Right? I can do the back slope of the roof. Let me orbit first. There, so that gives me that part of the roof, right? Now I need to. Looks like I screwed that piece up a little bit, but I need to draw the six and twelve for this piece, and then intersect the two. And you can see how the faces are going to ultimately uh, work their way through. So this can come straight up to meet that, which can come over to here, which can come to there, which will divide this surface, so we can see that edge of the roof. There, we can get rid of these lines. There and there. Yeah. Right, so you can see I was able to create that side. Obviously, I need to build the rest of the thickness of the roof. Right? I can do that in two different ways. I can push pull to create thickness to the roof. That would be one way. Right? The other way of doing it would be to actually draw it in place. So we could draw down whatever the thickness is. I didn't draw it on the end, but we could say. Um, Something like that. And then we're kind of drawing it out by hand. There's, there's a variety of ways of doing it. Right, so I can go down that and build the inside with just another set of lines. I can also use push pull right, to push this through. Something like that. Resurface the top. Let's get rid of this. We don't need that anymore. Like that. And then I can, again, push pull this edge right here to the opposite end of the house, like that. And so you see how I'm building that up, right? Likewise, right, I'm going to need, it depends on if you wanted a vaulted ceiling or not inside, right? And these are decisions you're going to have to kind of work through. But I can pull this up, right? Or I could draw a line all the way across this particular piece. Like 
It's hard because I haven't finished this side. Um, but I can use this with these surfaces. Pull them up through. And then come on, let me through. There we go. Right, if I draw here and there and there, I can cut off the top part. Right? And so it's just a matter of building up these these various pieces and, and you'll get there. Okay. So was there another question? The question? It's just it, sometimes you end up with these blue faces instead of the white faces. Um, it's, it has to do with the, the way the styles are done. Um, you can go back through and change the color. There's the front color being white. There's the back color being white or being this kind of bluish color. You can change the back color to be white and then you can't tell the difference. It has to do with how materials are applied. It doesn't really matter for right now uh, and for what we're doing in the class. Um, it's just it's nice practice to have the, the white faces out. That's all. As long as you add the texture on top of the back, it doesn't really matter. So why, why SketchUp distinguishes front and back faces? I don't know. All right? Potentially, a different texture. Yeah. Any other questions? No? All right. I'll turn you loose. Try to model as much of this building as you can um, so that you're ready to do the collaging stuff in the next couple exercises.